Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Crystal Ray Network College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution with you, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Sarah, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time and we encourage you to do so. Um, I would also encourage you that if you have a question for a particular institution, go ahead and list that school's name in, the, in your question so they can get to that a bit quicker. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to uh, check the schedule on the website for more. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Cristo dash Ray. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Case Western Reserve University. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, great to be with you. Uh, my name is Bob McCullough. I'm the Dean of Admission at Case Western Reserve University and uh, glad to uh, be sharing this time with you today. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the university uh, and show you some images as well to give you a good feel for uh, who we are. Um, so first of all, let me pull up my screen and, uh, and away we go. So uh, Case Western Reserve University is a Long name, quite a mouthful, uh, and but that's important because it tells you something about who we are as an institution. Western Reserve University was a liberal arts college that came together with Case Institute of Technology, uh, which was an engineering school. So we have this mid-sized university with a broad range of academic programs. Uh, as a student at Case Western Reserve University, uh, when you apply for admission, you are admitted through a single door to the entire university. So that includes our, our programs in the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, which was that Western Reserve part, uh, arts, humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, uh, as well as our School of Engineering, our School of Management, and our School of Nursing. Uh, so a lot of opportunity for students who might be interested in uh, multiple different things to be able to explore uh, various academic opportunities and programs that, that might interest them. Um, also, it's an, an institution where you can jump right in. So if you are interested in nursing, you're going to start doing clinicals your third week on campus. If you're interested in business, you're going to be taking accounting and finance right away in your first semester. In engineering, you're doing design courses right away. So all of these different kinds of things really encourage students uh, both to get the opportunities to dive right into what they want to study, but also have that, that chance to uh, explore, uh, to be broad, uh, and to have an experience where suppose you want to be a business student, but you also love uh, theater. Uh, this is the kind of place that you can really do that. So um, some things to know about us as an institution and as a place uh, to learn. Number one, uh, virtually all of our students, 99%, that's virtually all, uh, are doing experience-based education. What does that mean? Well, lots of different ways to be able to apply uh, what you're learning in the classroom in a variety of, of different settings. When we say 99% of our students are doing these kinds of activities, um, not only is that almost everybody, but it also tells you something about kind of the infrastructure and the programs that we have in place to be able to help students get these meaningful hands-on work experiences alongside what they're learning in the classroom. So this should be uh, very familiar to you as Crystal Ray students because you know what it's like to work alongside your academic uh, program. So what do we mean by experience-based education? Uh, service learning opportunities, uh, research. Case Western Reserve is a major research institution. So what that means is that our faculty are actively engaged in discovery and, and uh, being able to ask questions and try to figure out the answers to them. Clinical experiences, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, very strong internship programs and, and a very strong international uh, opportunity as well. In fact, not only do 99% of our students do these things, 70% do three or more different kinds of experiential learning programs. Uh, we surround you with help to be able to help you figure this out. So you have at your fingertips a team of people who are meant to work with you. So you have your faculty advisor within your academic discipline. You have a library advisor to help you figure out how to get the information that you need. 
you have your navigator who is somebody who's a full-time staff member paired with you the entire four years as an undergraduate to be able to help you optimize on all the different kinds of things that you might want to do. And then within the residence, you have your residential community director there kind of 24 seven to be able to help on all the different things related to living on and around campus. And virtually all of our students live on campus. So that's a really important thing. Outstanding facilities at Case Western Reserve. One that we like to highlight is the Think Box. It is the largest open access makerspace on any college or university campus in the country, 3D printing, laser cutting, all kinds of different things. But what's cool about Thinkbox is number one, it's open to everyone. And number two, it's not just about all kinds of cool equipment, it's about how students use these to be able to innovate and create a culture of entrepreneurship and discovery and creativity. So uh, many other opportunities like that. So an institution where you're gonna have a lot of experiences beyond the classroom. We are a residential campus where about 70% of our students live on campus and about uh, virtually all of our first and second year students are living on campus. So you'll be able to engage in a variety of different activities. We are in Cleveland, Ohio. It is an amazing city. Everyone should come to Cleveland. We have wonderful arts and culture and sports. Um, our guardians had a great season. They didn't quite go all the way, but we felt pretty good about that. And we're about four miles from downtown Cleveland on the University Circle campus. Here in University Circle, it rated the number one arts district in America by USA Today. You are surrounded by museums, the Severance Hall where the Cleveland Orchestra plays, one of the top orchestras in the world. And all of these become an extension of the campus for you uh, as an undergraduate student. Also three major medical centers. So the largest VA in the Midwest, Cleveland Clinic, one of the top hospitals in the world, uh, university hospitals with the Children's Hospital Cancer Center, Level 1 Trauma Center. So all of this, all of this access, all of these opportunities, all of these, the people who are going to help you add up to success. Within six months of graduation, 96% full-time employed uh, or, or in graduate school and, uh, and really kind of seeing that payoff from all the hard work that they put in. If you'd like to learn more, uh, these, these websites are great places to get information about the university or to engage in other virtual events. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you later on for your other questions. Thank you so much, Case Western Reserve University. Next up, we have Marquette University. Awesome. Well, as I'm pulling up my screen, um, I just want to go ahead and say hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. My name is Rosa Glombicki, and I am our Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment, which is just a fancy way of saying um, that I am regionally based here in the Chicagoland area um, and work with a lot of students from around this area, despite the fact that Marquette is located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I always like to start out by sharing just more about who we are at a glance. This whole process, this college search is about you finding the school that feels like home away from home and really feels like a good fit. So a lot of these quick facts I do think resonate with a lot of students as they're trying to determine if a school might be a good fit for them. So at Marquette, we're definitely more of a medium sized institution. We have roughly 7,600 undergraduate students. We do have a graduate population at Marquette as well of about 3,000 students. We have our own graduate school, our own law school. We also have our own dental school, the only dental school in the whole state of Wisconsin, which is pretty neat. Um, that medium size offers a lot of big school experiences and small school experiences too. So our average class size at Marquette is only about 25. The student to teacher is only about 13 to one. So when you walk into a classroom, professors know who you are. I'll talk about majors and I'll talk about our location a little bit later, but I do think it's worth noting on this slide that our students are very actively involved. Um, our students come from all different types of backgrounds, um, but they have really in common the fact that they are very active. They really want to participate in the classroom. They want to participate outside of the classroom as well. So we do put a really big emphasis on those research, research experiences, internships, as well as our student organizations as well. I like to always highlight, especially for this group, this is all about um, Cristo Rey. I like to highlight that we do have 103 Cristo Rey Network graduates at Marquette. We're really proud of that number um, and really, really love working with those students. We host a Cristo Rey Leadership Academy every summer. That's a chance for students to come to our campus and learn more about leadership, how to exhibit that in their future, how to exhibit that on their college application, et cetera. And then we have an Encuentros Mentorship Program, which is where we partner current Marquette 
at students with current Crystal Ray juniors and seniors. So if you're interested in a mentorship program, definitely reach out. We'd love to get you connected with that Encuentros program. So like I mentioned, we're located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So we are, like I said, a medium school right in the backyard of a medium sized city. So we have access uh, downtown Milwaukee is only about a mile from our campus. Lake Michigan is only about a mile and a half. So students really utilize the city as both an extension of their academic experience. So a lot of opportunities for those internships, for networking, for clinicals, for making sure that whatever it is you're learning in the classroom, you're able to put into practice in a real world scenario. Our urban location really enhances your ability to do that. Um, but Milwaukee is also an extension of your campus life and your social life. There's over 325 different student clubs and organizations available on our campus, but Milwaukee is such a fun place to go to college. There's anything from shops and restaurants to concerts that come through town. You can go to different sporting events, basketball, baseball, etc. There's just always something to do. Something that I think is nice is that while we are in more of that urban location, we still have a very traditional college campus feel. So everything that's highlighted right now is our specific campus. One half of it is more of our residential side. So about 95% of our freshmen and sophomore students live on campus. So you really get that residential community feel right away. And then the other side is more of our academic side. So all of your buildings for your academics, your clinicals, your libraries, your touring experiences, all those those resources you need to find academic success, you're going to find right there on campus. And it never takes more than about 10 minutes to walk from one end of campus to another. Something else that's really important to note about Marquette is that we are a direct admit university. So what that means is rather than applying to Marquette just generally, you are going to apply to be admitted directly to one of our seven undergraduate colleges. We do offer over 80 different majors spread out over all of these colleges. Um, and our programs are really, really strong um, for a lot of different things, but I think we're most well known for things in nursing, health sciences, business, engineering, et cetera. Um, like I mentioned, we are direct admit, and we do have um, we do have like graduate programs. We have our own graduate school, our own law school, our own dental school. So if you students are thinking ahead about wanting to obtain your master's or your doctorate level degree, it's important to know that we offer what are called accelerated degree programs that allow you to get to that master's or to that doctorate level degree faster than you typically would. So in six years total, rather than seven, you could have your law degree, you could have your doctorate in physical therapy, right? So again, I think something that we really encourage is that students right away freshman year, you are put into a classroom in your specific major. So you're automatically able to start exploring whatever academic program that allows you to earlier on really be able to discover, hey, is this major for me? Do I really like this? And then you're able to determine um, what your next step is going to be. So again, Again, those internships, networking, et cetera. Something else that's helpful to know if I have any seniors on today, our deadline for admission, we want you to apply by December 1st. As long as you apply by that December 1st regular decision deadline, you will learn of your admission. And as long as you're admitted, you will also learn of your scholarship by December 20th. All right, so that's a bit about the academics. Here is my picture and also my contact information. So if you wanna stay in touch, we would love to stay in touch with you touch with you and please come and visit campus. We would love to have you come and explore Marquette as well. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll chat with you later for the other questions. Thank you so much, Marquette University. Next up, we have University of Dayton. Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Jorge Munoz. I am one of the assistant directors of recruitment and admission at UD. Um, I recruit multi-ethnic students specifically in um, Florida, Texas, California, and Puerto Rico as well. And I'm super excited to, to be here with you today talking about my favorite institution of the world, the University of Dayton. So I am a two-time alum from 2017 and 2019. And um, I did multiple things throughout my career. And that's thanks to University of Dayton being a um, liberal arts school. So we are a Catholic Marianist institution. 
um, founded in 1850, and we are a medium-sized school, but with big school resources. As you can see on the screen, we have about 8,600 students, 46% of them coming from out of state, and those out of staters can easily call UD their second home because of the different amenities that we not only offer inside of our campus, but also the downtown location of Dayton. We are committed to inclusive excellence because we do understand that through diversity and inclusion, um, it provides a much richer experience inside of the classroom. Are we where we want to be? No, but we are getting there slowly but surely thanks to our 11 step action plan towards becoming an anti-racist institution. Now, when it comes to the average classroom size, it's about 26 with a 15 to one student to faculty ratio, meaning students that you're gonna get a pretty unique interaction with your professor where they're gonna get to know you on a first name basis. And they really are out here trying to get you to be as successful as you want to be because they want you to walk that red carpet, shake the president's hand and receive that diploma. 80 majors, 100 plus minors. Ultimately, we want you to kind of create your own curriculum, right? And that comes with being a liberal arts school where I was a communications major, but I pursued a minor in um, theater, dance, and performance technology. So a career path and a um, passion as well. Now, when it comes to our success rates, meaning that our in our first for our students who graduate in the first six months of after graduation, they um, prov they've provided uh, answers to the survey where we have about a 97% success rate and an 80% graduation rate. So it means what it means is that you know it speaks to our value to um, the volume of resources and engagement opportunities that we offer for our students in order to best prepare them for that next step. Right, and because of your you, because of your alumni from UD, you not only have opportunities to um, connect with our Career Services Center. They're going to actually provide that service for you, not only for your four or five years here, but for the rest of your life. And also, you're going to have the opportunity to engage with other Flyer alumni network communities, not only across the U.S. but on a global level. Now, when it comes to student engagement, we had about 260 plus student organizations and clubs and about um, 17 Division I athletics. But those clubs and organizations are touching on, um, you know, Greek life, uh, professional development, um, and also just for fun. I mean, say that you're a Disney freak and want to watch Disney movies on the weekend. We got a club for you. Say that you want to boogie down and, you know, you want to salsa or something like that. We absolutely have clubs for you. And if you don't see anything that piques your interest, you're absolutely more than welcome to create your own organizations. We love when students create um, opportunities to engage not only within campus, but also outside of campus as well. 80% 80, 80 of our students are wanting to live inside of our institution. And that is because of all these different opportunities, um, but also because of the fact that a lot, all if, a lot, if not all of our housing is located inside of our campus. So 400 houses, about nine apartment complexes. So just imagine yourself waking up one morning, coffee in your hand, music in the background, and then all of a sudden you see all your best friends just walking together over to class. Honestly, it's a pretty unique experience that as an alumni, I truly do wish that upon you. Now, when it comes to tuition plan, we are going to be very transparent with you. We don't have any hidden fees, no hidden surcharges. And if you come to visit campus, either in person or virtually, you're going to be halfway there for a $4,000 textbook scholarship. The other half is just sending us your FAFSA, and you're already going to be automatically eligible for it. We do have um, merit scholarships available, as well as need-based scholarships um, you know, provided from the FAFSA itself. And when it comes to the application process, we are test score optional. So if you feel like your ACT or SAT doesn't best represent your best academic output, you do not need to submit it. In addition to that, we uh, our application fee is absolutely free, so no application fees at all. So submit the test, submit the FAFSA, um, apply early action. So before that November 1st deadline, you're gonna be receiving your full financial aid offer by February 1st. Now, if you're interested in the nursing program, those deadlines are going to be a little bit different, as well as uh, UDC Clare Academy, which is our community college partnership, and if you're interested in transferring here as well. So thank you so much for uh, your attention. Love to hear back from you. I will put my contact information in the chat feature. Thank you.
Wonderful. Thank you so much, University of Dayton. Don't forget that if you have questions, you're welcome to use the Q&A uh, box on your, on your screen to type questions to our presenters throughout the remaining presentations. Um, next up, we have Augustana College. Hello everyone, my name is Courtney Wallace and I work at Augustana College. Um, happy October. I know that October is one, it's my favorite time of the year on campus, but it's also one of my favorite times of the year working with students that are applying to college because it's the countdown to all those application deadlines. So I hope that you're excited too. So I'm getting ready to share a little bit of information with you about Augustana. Um, we are located in the Quad Cities, and if you've never heard of the Quad Cities, um, it's a large metropolitan area right on the bluffs of the Mississippi River, so right on the border of Iowa and, and Illinois in the heart of the Midwest. Um, the Quad Cities is a community that's a population of about 4,000 people, so there's lots of fun things to do. Um, it includes 30 different museums, lots of great shopping and restaurants. Um, there's lots of opportunities to spend outside if you like hiking and biking and being on the water, um, but also certainly there's lots of opportunities just in general um, to enjoy uh, enjoy the community. Our students really enjoy exploring um, the different personalities of the different cities, um, of course, while going to college. So let me tell you a little bit about some of those facts. I know that um, Rosa mentioned this as part of her presentation. Um, we wanna know, well, you're certainly gonna wanna know what type of community you're going to be joining. Um, Augustana is a small school and um, we have about 2,500 students on campus. So small enough for personal attention, but not too small. Um, students choose Augustana for some of the same reasons you might have chosen um, a Crystal Ray institution. You want to have a great reputation. Um, you want to get to know your faculty and staff and, and make sure that you're really part of a, a real community. And that's exactly what happens at Augustana. Um, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, um, which means we're symbolizing commitment, making sure that nobody gets lost in the crowd and you are not going to get left behind. Um, our average class size is only 18. And and so um, you're going to be learning and um, getting to know your professors and peers because everyone does learn from one another at Augustana. And we have about 90 different um, majors and related areas of study. Um, you don't have to choose a major as you're applying to Augustana. You're going to choose an area of interest, but certainly nothing that you're locked into. We feel like it's our job to help you discover what your passions are while you're in college, and we do hope that you end up declaring um, your major by the end of your sophomore year, but there's certainly no pressure to, to pick that as an incoming student. Um, some of our largest areas of study are business, um, our health sciences, elementary and secondary education, psychology and neuroscience, and something called communication sciences and disorders. We do have a couple of new programs. Um, we have a new Bachelor of Science in Engineering, a new data analytics program, and also um, a new kinesiology program that started this past fall and has its new home in our Peter J. Lindbergh Health for, um, Center for Health and Human Performance. We are committed to excellence both inside and outside of the classroom at Augustana. Um, Augustana students are active, they're involved, they're ambitious. They double and triple major at very high rates, but at the same time, they're able to have fun, um, which means that they're involved in sports and clubs and spending time with friends. And that is certainly the culture that supports that balance um, at Augustana. So one in three of our students are varsity athletes. And so we're part of the CCIW, which is the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. So division NCAA Division Three. So at Augustana, um, athletes can be leaders of clubs. They can be involved in um, cool internships. They can study abroad, um, just as any other student can be. One in four students participates in a performing arts ensemble. You don't have to be a major to sing in the choir in our top choir or um, be the lead of a play in the theater program. So some opportunities for those who love fine arts include the symphonic band, orchestra, choir, um, jazz band, theater, opera. Um, we also have 150 different clubs and organizations. So there's really something for everyone. 
There's a club to train therapy dogs, as you can see on the screen. Um, there's a radio station, a newspaper, our own crew team that um, rows on the Mississippi River, uh, active fraternity and sorority life, intramurals, club sports, um, an equestrian team, and seriously, you name it. But there's nothing better that that um, embodies the balance that Augustana has than um, the NCAA uh, academic All-American ratings. And we're confident that if there was a rating like this for Greek life or leadership or fine arts, that we would be in the top 10 uh, of this as well. But Augustana ranks in the top 10 of all colleges and universities across the United States, division one, two, and three for the number of academic All-Americans we produce. So these are students that are being recognized um, nationally for their involvement um, in athletics, but also their uh, ability to perform in the classroom. One other thing I wanted to tell you about was Augie Choice. Um, this is an opportunity for you to get $2,000 to use towards an internship, research, or international experience. We certainly wouldn't want money to stand in the way of you being able to take advantage of a cool program. Um, and we have lots of opportunities for you to join Augustana. You can apply early action, regular decision. Those um, deadlines are November 1st. Um, and we're really hoping that you'll let us know um, when you'd like to come to campus and meet with one of us. And good luck this fall with your college applications process. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Courtney. Next up, we have Albion College. Hello, everyone. My name is Alondra Alcazar. And give me a quick moment. All right, so Albion College is located in Albion, Michigan. Um, just so you guys can see. All right, so we're located in Albion, Michigan. Um, so we are a very small school. We're a small private liberal arts college. We have about 1,500 students. So we are a small school. Um, your average class size is 16 students. The biggest it's going to get for sure is 25 to 30 students. That's the biggest it's going to be. And those tend to be like the one-on-one -on -one courses. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1. Basically, what these numbers mean, all of the colleges have numbers like these is that you will receive a very intimate education. So if you don't go to class, like a professor will notice, and it's just to say that they care about you, especially um, I'm an alum. I was also an out-of-state student. So I, I just felt nice to know there was a group of people there that were always looking out. Um, but yeah, when you're in college, you're an adult, nobody's holding you by the hand. So if you don't wanna go to class, that's up to you, but it's good to know that there's people out there that genuinely care about you. And they're gonna reach out and be like, hey, you're starting to fall behind, come to my office hours or let's do this. That's what these numbers represent to me. Um, something important to note is that we have a 97% placement rate. So that's important. That's a really good number because we wanna make sure that you get either placed into your top one choice of graduate program or that you find a job right after college because that is the whole purpose as to why you're in school. We have 44 majors. Um, so you can go ahead and look at them there. But something unique that we have as well is the individually designed major as well. So you can design your own major. Um, if there's something that you don't see there, something that is not a career, because I know that some people already have like a career specific in mind. Um, but if there's something that you would want to combine with another major, you can definitely do it. But at going to a liberal arts college means that you're going to receive a well-rounded education. So even if you're somebody that's interested in business or pre-med, you're still going to have to take that history course. You're still going to have to take that art course. Um, we call them modes and categories, but you have the option to pick those classes. So when I was a student, I chose Mexican American history. I'm like, if I'm going to take a history class, I better take something that relates to my culture. So it's you can um, choose specific classes that will fulfill those modes and categories. So yeah, even while you're a business student or while you're a pre-med student, you, you can still participate in conversations that are outside of that. And a lot of it means just testing your comfort zone. Um, and something else that I wanted to mention are pre-professional pathways. So for example, like you wouldn't major in pre-med, um, but we do have those pre-professional pathways, mentors and advisors that will help you along the way, whether it's pre-nursing, um, pre-law, pre-engineering, as you can see there. But most importantly, we always recommend our institutes. This is something that sets us apart from other small private liberal arts colleges. We have institutes set in place that will help you 
um, go towards that career track. So for example, just the first one, the Gerstacker Institute for Business. Um, you don't have to join this institute if you're a business student, but we definitely recommend you to do so. Joining these institutes, you will graduate with a concentration in that institute, basically meaning that you received extra mentorship. And by joining one of these institutes, they do require a little bit more from you because you would be a member. So I know that one of the requirements for the business institutes that you have to graduate with at least two um, internships. And 97% of our students that were in the, in the, the Gerstacker Institute for Business already had a giant lined up by junior or senior year before graduation. So that's a really good um, thing to notice as well. And for one of our top ones is the Wilson Institute for Medicine, which we also encourage any healthcare student to join, whether it's nursing, whether it's physical therapy, exercise science, we will make sure that you get experience. That's what these institutes are about. Experience is so important because when you graduate, anywhere, they're going to be like, what are your one, one or two years of experience? So essentially, that's what these institutes are. And we really value experiential learning. The world is your classroom. Like I mentioned before, anywhere you go, they're always going to say, how many years of experience do you have? Um, and that can be by doing student research, by joining clubs and organizations, by doing internships, studying abroad. That is my biggest regret, not studying abroad. If you have the ability to do it, do so. Um, never in your life you're going to get the chance to pick up and leave for three months and then come back and everything is back to normal because after you graduate it just keeps getting harder so definitely take advantage of studying abroad we actually give students an extra scholarship just to study abroad and all of your aid is transferable as well and then athletics is something else that that leads to belonging being a part of athletics we are division three and a part of the ncaa conference um but also being a part of clubs and organizations. We have over 100 clubs and organizations um, that you can be a part of. But something else that I wanna mention you guys before I forget is that we do have a flying program. So if there's any students that are out of state um, that are not in the bordering states like Illinois or Ohio, um, if you're like in a state that's further away from Michigan, you can go ahead and look at this for our flying program. We will fly you out to Michigan. All you have to do is pay $25, which we're gonna return back to you in a gift card um, so you can spend on campus, but you can go ahead and look at the steps and take a picture of that. We do already have dates set in place um, in the spring. So you for sure have to be admitted by December 1st um, and have Albion added to your FAFSA. But most importantly, the, the scholarships, these are really great, especially if you're at the um, network, you will get a $5,000 automatic scholarship. Our merit scholarships based from 26 to 35,000. If you have a 3.79 and above, you will get an additional 4,000. If you're out of state, another 5,000. And if you visit, that's another 2,000 and all of these are yearly. So if you guys have any questions, I'm just gonna put my information down below. But yeah, that is all. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, LVN College. Next up, we have Xavier University. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, fellow presenters. Great to see you all in October. Um, here we go. So hopefully you can see my screen there. I'm Ed Devine from Xavier University, um, based on the West Coast. I uh, want to say hello to all our Cristo Rey students who have had the good fortune of visiting many of the Cristo Rey schools. Uh, just this year, I've been in Colorado and uh, Southern and Northern California. So applaud the work you're doing and know that you're going to be coming to us very well prepared. Uh, first off, I'd love to talk about Cincinnati. We are located in the just north of Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati right now has been rated the number one city for college graduates to move to. That ranking by Smart Assets and U.S. News World Report was based on three main characteristics. One, it's a fun city. Two, it's affordable. Three, there's great internship and job possibilities. We have the second fastest growing economy right now. So a lot of great opportunities in Cincinnati to call, um, to call it your home during your college years. We are home to the biggest Oktoberfest outside of Munich, Germany. Just finished celebrating that. We do have three professional sports teams, some amazing festivals, and some amazing things to explore. Some of my favorite pictures here in the lower left, that's the Ohio River. And one of our big social events is to get out on those ferry boats uh, and celebrate the welcome of our new students. Um, you can also see in the lower right-hand corner the Cincinnati Reds, the oldest American baseball team. Uh, and right above that picture, a day called Club Day, would we welcome you to join our over 200 clubs and organizations on campus. 
we're 5,300 undergraduates, so a 12 to 1 student to teacher ratio. We do offer over 90 different programs. I will introduce you to those in just a minute. But do know that many of our students come in as exploratory students, meaning they don't have a chosen major. We have very high rankings for our teaching, a lot of access to connecting with faculty and professional staff to figure out what you wanna study as you move through the four years. I myself didn't choose my college major until late sophomore year, so there is time to do that. We'll bring up this slide to take a look at some of our top majors. Um, nursing is a big direct entry program. We are well known for our STEM programs. Um, anything in computer science, data science, we are very well known for great internships in the city. We have an excellent exercise science program that's housed in our hub, our student athletic facility and wellness facility. Uh, that's where we have our nursing, our um, physical therapy, as well as our exercise science. We do particularly well in sports marketing and sports management. Again, a great city. You get to work with our division one program, but also with the Cincinnati Bengals, the FC Cincinnati, and the Cincinnati Reds. We're also known for great theater, music, and art. It's a great city to explore those endeavors, so our students choosing those majors will also enjoy the city of Cincinnati. Some unique programs, you see one there, land, farming, and community, a multidisciplinary approach to environmental sustainability. We also have another great major called philosophy, politics, and the public another multidisciplinary approach to the pre-law track. So really students get to find their way, many work closely with advisors throughout their first two years to pick that major. Our Xavier students are coming to us most of the time from outside the state of Ohio. Normally that's over 60%. The pandemic dropped that a little bit. 24% uh, of our students are students of color. We do welcome about 20% of our students as first generation students. We are a Jesuit Catholic institution, one of the 27. So as a Xavier graduate, you'll enter into that much larger network, which comprises those 27 universities in the United States and worldwide a whole host of other educational enterprises. Um, we are home to 24 different faiths on campus. Last year, 18 faiths represented in the incoming class. And one of my favorite statistics, 40% of the Musketeers, 40% of our students, are the only one from their high school to attend Xavier. So many of our students are approaching us to build new community um, and we really work with you on that. We have a, an outstanding new student orientation called Manresa. We also will assign each of our students a six, six member coaching staff. I will work with you through admission and financial aid, but one of my favorite positions at the university, the success coaches, they meet you freshman year, actually before you get to campus, and help guide you through that transition to college, help you settle in on a major, really encourage you to get involved in things like clubs and organizations and on-campus research. Great shot in the middle there of our Cintas Basketball Center. It's right in the center of our campus, home to seats 10,300 students. So we love to support our athletic teams, all Division I in the Big East. We just did welcome our 35th president, Dr. Colleen Hanich. She is our first non-Jesuit president. What's really cool is that she's enhancing the student experience. That's been her focus. Her daughter is a current sophomore. So really she's getting an inside look at the Xavier experience from the student perspective. We do celebrate that Jesuit identity, which you're familiar with, but that means for you that we will address and talk about social justice issues. We believe in cura personalis or education of the whole person. So we talk about that mind, body, and spirit education as part of your journey through Xavier. We're on the Common App, pretty straightforward, looking at about a 3.5 GPA. We are test optional. We started that before the pandemic and will likely continue that beyond. That's a little bit about Xavier. I'm gonna turn it back over to Sarah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Xavier University. And at this stage, I would like to invite all of our presenters to come back on screen. Um, and we're going to give them a chance to share some advice with you. Um, so starting with Case Western Reserve University, and we'll go in the order that you presented, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Sure, thanks. Um, so thanks for the question. Um, I think the, the first piece of advice that I would give to folks going through the process is really to remember who this is all about. And 
um, as you go through, it's really, I mean, you heard some, from some wonderful schools and wonderful opportunities, and um, it's really easy to feel a little bit overwhelmed with all of the information that's pulling you in lots of different directions. Um, but just make sure that you're taking the time to do some self-reflection as you go through the process, checking in with yourself, checking in with things that you think are important to you, uh, kind of coming back to sort of core values that you think matter to you, um, and, and being okay with recognizing that things that might have been really important to you in the summer between your junior and senior year, maybe those things shift a little bit over time, the more that you learn. Uh, but really just to, to, to be concise there, take the time to be checking in with yourself uh, because ultimately it's gonna be you who's, who's gonna to go to college. Thank you, Marquette University. Yeah, so kind of jumping off of that, you know, once you've taken that time to really reflect on those characteristics that matter to you, I think that visiting a college campus is so incredibly important. So, you know, find schools that really match those characteristics that you think might be a good fit for you. And then maybe even challenge that view by visiting a school that has completely opposite characteristics. And once you're on a, a college campus, you're going to get that gut sense of, could I see myself here? Could I feel like I belong? at this school. So definitely get on to as many college campuses as you can, as early as you can. That way you get a sense for what type of school might be a good fit for you. University of Dayton. Uh, I would say, um, you know, going along the lines of both from, you know, Case Western and from Marquette, uh, when you do your research on the specific schools that you're looking for, really look into their website and see what kind of support services they offer, right? Because you know that, or, you know, uh, from our side, right, that we've already been through the college search process and we've been through um, all of our level of academics, uh, we know that we can't do this on by ourselves. And so it's really support important to the school to have you're back throughout your four, five, six years uh, at the institution. Augustana College. I would say try to have some fun in this process. It can be overwhelming as you're applying to schools, but you get to pick this next adventure. You get to pick the school and the environment and the people that you're going to be surrounded by. And so I hope that you're excited about that. And so have some fun. I'll be in college. I know that it can be a little bit overwhelming having to make a decision, um, but one of the things that I would have liked to know myself as a first generation um, college student is that do things that scare you, because imagine just staying in the same mentality where like I can't go out of state because I'm going to leave family behind. Trust me, they're going to be fine. <laughs> so that's my one piece of advice. Do something that scares you. And also a no is as good as a yes. If there's a school that does, definitely does not interest you you know, just move on to the next thing. That's definitely don't entertain anything. Um, and you can take it as slow as you want. There's no rush. Don't let nobody rush you in this process. That's all. Xavier University. Yeah, great tips from all. Um, I, I would say just think about what you want to do in college. As you do your research, kind of amass what our students on campus call their bucket list. And think about that four years ahead of you. You're going to have amazing opportunities no matter where you go. And it's about how you kind of control and manage those uh, those years that, that will go fleetingly. So think about what you want to do. Think about your goals. Every time you read about something, jot down a, a little journal of your bucket list because there'll be a day you wake up junior year in college and think, I'm running out of time. I want to do more. So think about what you want to do. The where is secondary. Uh, focus on yourself. So our next question, and we'll do this very quickly. Uh, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Uh, Case Western Reserve University. Yeah, um, I, I think one thing that I want students to remember uh, about us is that um, we are very serious about science. We had the first American Nobel Prize winner uh, at our campus. And so uh, come and uh, we'll, we'll dive in deep on all things science. Great. Marquette University. Yeah, so I know Ed just kind of talked about this, you know, with that the the Jesuit values, but I really do think that um, I just want everyone to remember about Marquette that our community is second to none. I think that our campus population, our students, our staff, our faculty are all just so um, mission driven around that ideal of cura personnel that care for the whole person, um, being that Marquette is also the the Jesuit 
uh, university and has those values. And so you're just treated as an individual, you're treated differently. So I just want you to remember that our, our community is awesome and I want you to come check it out for yourself. Thanks so much, University of Dayton. You are muted, Jorge. Great, coming off with a mistake, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I do want to remind you all is the fact that we are test score optional and it doesn't hinder your eligibility to get a merit scholarship and it won't hinder you, our decision. Um, and that's, that's all I got. Great, thank you. Augustana College. We send about 70% of students to study abroad and make sure that you can afford to do so by giving you $2,000 to use towards that experience. Amazing, Albion College. Um, that we have amazing scholarships, especially for Cristo Rey students, and especially we have great grades. And even if you don't, we will make sure that you are well taken care of um, so it can make a college affordable, since I know that that tends to be one of the main concerns for many families. So we will take care of you. <laughs> and Xavier University. Yeah, well, the first thing is we're going to make a deep run in March and win the national championship <laughs> in football. You've got it from here. Um, also, there's an amazing sense of community. We are the Musketeers. Go X. You're going to build amazing community on our campus and within the city of Cincinnati, and you're going to enjoy your time. And that wraps up our session. I want to send um, a huge virtual thank you to our wonderful panelists and participants uh, for their wisdom, for their insights into their institutions. I hope that you are taking away and walking away with some um, incredible knowledge from this event. Thank you for joining us and tuning in. After you close this window, there will be a very quick five question survey. Please uh, send us some feedback if you can. Sign up for more sessions on our website. And this recording will be available at stridescan.com backslash Christian. So Cristo Dash Ray, thank you so much and have a great rest of the day.